The Octatrack MIDI ARP is a very special kind of sequencer within a sequencer, offering very modular capabilities. In this example, I'll be using the Mutable Instruments Ambica synthesizer. I have it set to the factory Juno patch, and here I'm configuring it to act as a mono synth, and I'm going to set it to respond to MIDI channel 9. This is so it doesn't conflict with the default Octatrack MIDI mappings for the audio playback tracks for MIDI channels 1 through 8. Now I'm going to set up a through machine on track 1. Make sure to get a trig down to trigger that through machine. I have the Ambica mix output running into input A. Now time to go into the MIDI side. Double tap the menu page button to get into the setup. Then push and hold the encoder to adjust the MIDI channel. Push the encoder again to confirm the channel setting. Time to get a MIDI trig down. Okay, that works. So we have access to typical boring P-lock sequencing, but we can get a little spicier than that. The MIDI note length value will act as a gate length for the arpeggiator. I'm going to turn up the length value to infinite. And now I'm going to turn the arpeggiator on. It's just going to rhythmically trigger the note we have selected at the speed we have selected. And the in length parameter controls the length of the generated notes. It has no effect if the arpeggiator is off. We can set the octave range that is generated. You can hear it stepping through the three different octaves before the arp is re-triggered. So let's add some notes to this chord. The notes entered here have important implications when interacting with the ARP mode. Right now I have it set to true, which plays through the notes in the same order they were entered. So in this case, true is the same as up, but down will have an effect. Cycle is basically pendulum mode. Shuffle randomly plays through the notes in each octave. A shuffle setting with a range of one octave is equivalent to a random setting with a range of one octave. It's only when you use the octave setting that their differences become apparent. The transpose value of the arpeggiator is actually always in effect regardless of whether or not the arpeggiator mode is on. The speed setting isn't very thoroughly documented in the manual. They simply say that an x6 value is 16th notes and an x12 value is 8th notes.
Now I'm going to turn off the cord. And we'll go into the ARP setup page by double tapping this menu button. So pressing and holding these, you can dial in offsets to the ARP pattern using the level encoder. If you tap them, they will turn red and deactivate, allowing you to program rhythms into the ARP setup. I'm just putting a minor scale into it here. And the ARP setup has a scale quantization function. This will force all output values of the ARP to be inside the selected scale. This quantization is in effect whether or not the arpeggiator is on or off. Since I'm only sending a single note to the arpeggiator, we're only hearing the offsets from the ARP setup, and the mode has no effect. But if I add an extra octave of range, Now I'll add back some of the notes I was sending to the arpeggiator earlier. With the example I have now, changing legato setting won't do much. Since now I'm using a scale quantization, the transpose will stay in key. Now I'll change up the ARP rhythm and offsets. We can also adjust the length of the ARP offset pattern. Now things start to actually get a bit exciting when we start to p-lock the ARP values per step. You can put different transposition, mode, note length, octave, speed values, chord notes, and all of these things can be modulated by LFOs as well. Maybe I'll take the tempo down a bit.
And we don't have to limit ourselves just to p-locking the arpeggiator parameters. We can also modulate all of these MIDI parameters and arpeggiator parameters using the MIDI LFOs. For example, you could be modulating every single one of these chord note values using a custom MIDI LFO. This would result in a very complex input to the arpeggiator. Okay, it's a little easier to show some of the aspects of the ARP at a slower speed. Not time to take the tempo back up. To get consistently predictable results from ARP modulation, you're going to have to lean heavily on the use of the custom LFO. But from my perspective, it's very fun to see what you can do without getting that detailed. You can even modulate the ARP on and off. The square web LFO can be useful for quick and dirty modulation of the ARP speed between two meaningful values. I'll put on quick mute to be able to see the LFO parameters more easily. I'll revisit those offsets. Now I'm going to adjust the Ambica so that it is in a polyphonic mode. And I'm going to adjust the amplitude envelope a bit. I want the arpeggiated notes to start overlapping each other more. Make it a little pluckier. Yeah, that's getting a little nicer. Hmm, I think I'm going to reduce the pluckiness a bit. Time to turn up the note length.
Might as well add some randomness into this. And I'd like to be modulating the velocities as well. Getting more nuanced now. Let's put some chorus on this one. Time for some reverb too. I mean we're using a generative ARP, right? to set up another track to record chunks of that and play it back. Try ping pong and turn the length to time. Ugh, I always do that and I'll have to redo it. Set that to its record buffer. Have it record track one. Just a short chunk. Get that record trick down. Try reducing the clicks a bit with a slower attack. Other strategies for reducing these types of clicks involve the use of filters or time-based effects to smear the transient. with the playback pitch a bit. Messing with this filter can bring the clicks in and out quite a bit. This 
especially with the cue turned up. Take a quick glance at that recorder buffer. Looks good to me. Take it back to the original pitch. Or not. Maybe some modulation for these effects. Okay, back to the resampling track. to forget about the distortion parameter in the filter setup page. It's quite a bit different from what the lo-fi effect offers. And I'll switch the destination of the envelope modulation. So now I'm going to let the Octatrack ARP do all the talking. <laughs> 